Plants are often disregarded and relegated to the background as part of the furniture. However, plants experience and recognize the world just as animals do. They fight for territory, search for food, fend off predators, and hunt prey. They do all of this without eyes, ears, or brains. Perhaps the easiest way to observe this behavior is through time-lapse photography. This technique reveals that plants move with purpose, which indicates that they must be aware of their surroundings. This is vital because plants need sophisticated sensing devices in order to respond correctly to external stimuli. So, what exactly is plant perception? Maybe it's not quite so different from our own. In 1973, a book titled The Secret Life of Plants was published. It appealed to a wide range of young people, but contained little to no facts. The book's biggest claim is that plants respond positively to the sound of classical music, a claim which has been painstakingly debunked. However, the science of plant perception has immensely improved since the 1970s, and the attention has shifted into questioning why and how a plant senses its surroundings. In recent years, researchers at the University of Missouri performed a series of experiments to explain why plants are affected by sound. They found that a Beethoven symphony evoked no response, while the sound of caterpillars eating caused the plants to release a chemical designed to fend off predators, as they felt they were being attacked. The researchers showed that plants respond to sounds that are relevant to their environment and survival. This is what scientists refer to as ecological relevance. Researchers from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich have also shown that some plants take this ability a step further. In addition to being able to hear insects that are close by, some plants can also smell them or smell faint signals released by nearby plants in response to them. In theory, plants are not much different from us. They see or hear something and react accordingly. But how do they do it without sensory organs, without eyes, ears, or brains? The photoreceptors that plants use to see, for example, are fairly well studied. But to better understand the underlying mechanism, researchers at the University of Missouri tracked down the part of a plant that responds to sound. They found that mechanoreceptor proteins may be responsible. The idea is that sound waves generated by insects that are nearby hit the mechanoreceptor proteins found in plant cells. These sound waves leave micro deformations on the surface of the plant. It is these tiny deformations that get converted by mechanoreceptor proteins into electrical or chemical signals. Proprioception is another ability plants share with us. This is what's referred to as the sixth sense, which allows us to generally know where various parts of our body are in space, among other things. Plants also have mechanoreceptors that detect changes in their surroundings and respond accordingly. What researchers know so far is that tiny structural components of the cell, called microtubules, play a key role in the process by responding to stretch and mechanical deformation. Electrical signaling in plants was first proposed in 1874 by physiologist John Burden Sanderson to explain how the Venus flytrap senses its prey. And in 2014, researchers in Switzerland showed that when a caterpillar attacks a plant, it triggers a wave of electrical activity. What's astonishing about that particular research was the discovery of molecules called glutamate receptors. Glutamate is an important neurotransmitter in our nervous system, and it functions the same in plants, except plants do not have nervous systems. One possible explanation is that electrical communication has evolved in two different ways, but ended up at the same destination. This discovery opened the door wide open in the field, inspiring new disciplines that study memory, learning, and problem solving in plants. Some lawmakers, specifically in Switzerland, went as far as calling for the protection of the dignity of plants. Some scientists, however, believe that complexity shouldn't be confused with intelligence. Despite the apparent disadvantages and the lack of a nervous system and other components, plants are equipped with the necessary tools to do exactly what they need to do. The plant Arabidopsis, for example, has 11 types of photoreceptors, while humans have only two types. This means their vision is superior to ours, in a way. The realization that we have some things in common with plants might be an opportunity to accept that we are more plant-like than we would like to think, just as plants are more animal-like than we usually assume.